Hey everyone, before uh, I get to the video, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have a Patreon, and uh, for everyone who helps me out on Patreon and decides to give me money, that's really cool if you guys do that. Uh, I recently got it my very first Patreon, Mark here. Uh, Mark runs a website, uh, or he's part of a website, Boiling Steam, uh, which is a Linux-oriented uh, gaming website. They have uh, podcasts where they uh, interview some... Uh, pretty famous people uh, in the Linux world, like they have a podcast on Cheese, uh, who did the Day of the Technical Remaster port for Linux. Uh, Cheese also did an amazing article on his experience with porting uh, games to Linux. Uh, so anyway, m make sure to check out Mark's website. Uh, once again, the website is uh, boilingsteam.com. It's a pretty nice website. I listened to a bit of the podcast, uh, and it seemed pretty good. Uh, so anyway, yeah, thank you, guys, uh, thank you, Mark, for supporting me on Patreon. Alright, now it's time to get into the game. Today, guys, I'm playing Barity Cursed Edition. Uh, Barity is a uh, first-person roguelike RPG developed and published by Turning Wheel. Uh, it's a pretty cool game. The main reason why I want to do a video on this game is because I'm a big fan of the uh, roguelike genre. And I really like the idea of a first-person roguelike game, uh, especially this one because it stays pretty true to traditional roguelike elements. Uh, on top of that, this game is actually open source. Uh, not too long ago, the developers uh, released the source code for the engine on GitHub uh, under GPL3, I believe. So that's really cool of them to do that. You don't see that often at all. Uh, so yeah, it's really cool you guys do that. And of course, it's on Linux. So here we are playing it. I'm going to go ahead and unmute the game audio so you guys can hear this game's... I think this, this game's soundtrack is pretty good, actually. Uh, so yeah, anyway, we're just going to go ahead. You have an introduction section, which will walk you through some things. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start a new game. Uh, you get to choose between male or female. Uh, so yeah, there's some customization elements. They're pretty basic, though, uh, like in other roguelike games. You just pick your, uh, like your sex and your class. Your class will affect the uh, starting difficulty of the game. It does say down here uh, what the difficulty is and just gives you a description of... Uh, the classes abilities. I like to start off with the cleric. Uh, well, actually, no, that's not true. The warrior is kind of fun because the warrior has a spear and that's long range. Uh, and then you choose your appearance, which is just you know a pre-selection of uh, faces. I like the uh, fire brand. So we're gonna go ahead and continue and then hop right into the game. Oh, you get to name them. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> there, we'll just name them that. Oh yeah, and one big thing about this game is that it's actually multiplayer. Uh, which is really cool. This game reminds me a lot of Delver, but as, as far as I don't know, Delver doesn't have multiplayer. So that's one interesting feature that this game has, is that you can host a multiplayer uh, server. Uh, you know, I don't know if this game has dedicated servers, but I know you can host it right here, and you can have your friends join in, and you can play uh, with them. So that's really cool. I'm going to go ahead and hop right into the game. Yeah, so here we are in the game, you know, like I said, this game does kind of look a lot like uh, Delver. It has that very similar uh, blocky style of graphics. Uh, not unlike Minecraft. Uh, so yeah, you move with WASD. When you move left and right, uh, your character actually goes kind of slow. So your character does move faster uh, when you're going forward. So you, you kind of get used to just going forward and using the mouse as your directions. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and right click is how you activate things. Yeah, so the uh, the start the starting warrior class has a um, a, sh a shield as well as a spear with really good range uh, and a scythe and a, a bow. I tend to recommend the uh, warrior as the starting class because uh, I think it's really good. We have uh, our life and magic on the lower left, and on the lower right we have a, a little mini map that gets filled as we explore the dungeon. Well, good luck. You can also hold left click to do a, a power attack. So yeah, this game is a uh, it's a first person roguelike, and uh, this game, uh, unlike other first person roguelikes I've played, uh, or just roguelikes in general, uh, this game does respect the uh, classic style of roguelike elements. Uh, so you do get like scripts that you just find that are just like you don't know what the hell they do. You just use them and find out, uh, and you have lots of like. Uh, Everything is procedurally generated, of course, and uh, it's also really brutally difficult. It can take a while to uh, get used to this game's uh, difficulty, but it's not too bad. You know, if you pick a if you uh, pick a class like the warrior, it's not too challenging. Uh, but you know, that is what I like about roguelikes. You know, is their challenge. 
but so we're going to go ahead and uh, explore on. It's a pretty fun game. Uh, not too many people play this online, so if you do get this game, uh, you know, you might want to have a friend to play it with. Okay, gold, three armor. Uh, you can also identify things. Oh crap, it's cursed, damn it. <laughs> yeah, see that's one thing if you've ever played a, a, a really tough route bike is that there are cursed items. So because I accidentally equipped that breastplate and because it's cursed, my character's now like holding it and I can't unequip it. Oh no. <laughs> so I've already made a mistake very early on. So yeah, uh, much like, you know, traditional roguelikes, this game can be really unforgiving. Oh wow, there's a trap there. It's the first time I've seen that trap. <laughs> Good thing it didn't get me. <laughs> Okay, let's lock it. There we go. So yeah, the gameplay is pretty simple, but uh, I think it's very fun. Feel wise. Okay, so I just leveled up a little bit. I'm gonna drink the water. Oh, I can't move. Oh no! Oh no! Am I stuck here? There we go. Wow. So yeah, there's all kinds of traps uh, scattered out throughout the levels. So you do have to be mindful of what you do. Um, you also have these scrolls, which, you know, if you've ever played a roguelike, you never know what they do until you use them or identify them. So what's here? Uh, blue potion there. Yeah, and even the potions are unlabeled, so you just got to sort of take a quaff them and find out what they do. Well, that's the bottom floor right there. So if I take that, it'll take me down to a lower floor. But I'm going to explore this area a bit more. Uh, make sure there's nothing I missed. Worker's Journal. Okay, it's the first time I've ever gotten an item like that. Uh, interesting. So there is a little bit of uh, notes and stuff you can find. That's a nice feature. I'm not going to drink that fountain. I just had a bad experience with one, so... Mm, I think I've... Uh, oh, what's this over here? Oh, it's a quarter staff. Those things are garbage. Uh, let's go this way. Oh, what does this switch do? Uh oh, I think I just spawned something. Oh, no, I opened that gate. Okay. You never know what you do. <laughs> oh, it's a chest. Alright. Oh, magic items. Yeah, it seemed like I got that chest was magic oriented. Which is kind of disappointing. Uh, if you uh, right click, if you hold right click uh, on items, you get a, options of some things you can do. Like you can choose to appraise them, drop them, store them in the chest. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to the uh, floor exit. We're gonna go down a uh, floor deeper. So yeah, you, I mean the game plays like your traditional uh, roguelike, and it's in first person, so it's really quite enjoyable. Uh, you know, if you're a fan of uh, roguelikes or uh, like old school dungeon crawlers. I think this game could be really enjoyable. This game is really dark, as you can see. Wow, a Minotaur. Oh god, yeah, I think it's telling me to hurry up and finish the floor. Okay, let's try to hurry up and find the exit here. Yeah, so the game is can actually be a little creepy. Those are some really lewd noises. Oh man. Okay, so let's... I do kind of want to explore somewhat. Oh wow, I already found the floor out of here. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next floor. Oh, see this area is pretty well illuminated. Oh, uh, what's this shield at? Serviceable wooden shield. Uh, this current one I have is bronze, so we'll keep mine. Yeah. So, uh, and there is also, depending on what classes you pick, obviously change the uh, gameplay up. Like, uh, I was playing with a, uh, a mi Oh, no! <laughs> oh, I looked right at it, too. Oh, no. That's unfortunate. But yeah, you have other classes as well. Like, um, if I go ahead and end game real quick, you have the mage classes, which are fun to pick. Which is fun to play. I like playing mages in these sorts of games because I like the uh, progression in which they have. Uh, see, the uh, mage starts off with a pretty weak uh, weapon, the staff, which is like really terrible. 
but uh, you get spells to start off with. You get this, which like casts light, which is really useful in dark areas. Uh, but you also get these spell books that you read, and it teaches you uh, some spells. It teaches you fireball and stuff like that. So, and all you have to do is you hit a, uh, you know, you put it in your tool bar, tool bar, tool bar, and then you press the numeric key, and then it prepares it, and then you just hit F, and it casts it. So yeah, that's pretty nice. And the mage also runs really fast, probably probably because of how light the starting equipment is. Much, much faster than the uh, warrior. Yeah, there's usually spiders in there, so you gotta be careful. Uh, see, I personally enjoy... Oh! Personally, the mage is my favorite, even though it you can kind of get bad RNG with the mage and start off really bad. Oh, rotten food! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I just ate some rotten cheese. Oh man, what am I doing? Oh, what's this green thing? Take it. Oh god! <laughs> oh no. This is not going great. Okay, eat the meat. There we go. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's not... Okay, I'm already at two health. Yeah, that's what happens if you do things without paying attention. There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, where is... Give me something to kill. Yeah, I really like playing mages and roguelikes. I like the um, scale that they uh, that they work at. Like mages are usually. Oh god, I did it again. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I fell for the same trap. Because like I said, when you uh, when you walk back left or right, you go really slow. So if you try to walk back from a trap, you'll just get destroyed like that. Anyway, yeah, mages are always my favorite class to play as, just because they, even though they start off kind of weak. In the later game, they become very powerful and can be totally overpowered. Anyway, yeah, thank you guys for watching this. Uh, if you check out below in the description, you'll see links for things like my Patreon and Steam. And if you guys want to maybe get together and try this game out, you know, uh, play it together at co-op, I would definitely enjoy doing that. Uh, and I'll also put a link to the uh, engine, this game's GitHub page so you can download the engine if you, you know, plan on using it for your own things. Oh yeah, uh, thanks for watching guys, this has been Ghost Squad 57 signing off.